Hi, and welcome to this video on how to customize a standard report in uh, Business Central. I'm Eric, and uh, one of the challenges with reports is that there's no report extension object. So how do you actually extend and, and modify one of the built-in reports? So let's get right into it. I have a um, Business Central right here. And let me go into, let's say, customer top 10. That's a nice report. I can run the report. It's there. Customer top 10. Notice the caption. Let's try to run it. And there's the report. I only have five customers, so my top 10 list is only five. And we have a nice little graph, and that's, that's, that's cool. But how do we go about changing this one? Well. The first thing we need is actually to realize that let, let's go back into uh, obviously studio code. And if I do open an AL object browser, I will create a video at some point on, on some of the tools I use. This is an extension, uh, but let's find the, uh, the report. Customer top 10. And I, I can get the, the, the DLL, so the debug AL uh, source code. But if I press F12 on this one, so the, the, the problem is that a report is actually at least two files. In some cases, it's actually more than two files, but it's a, a report object, that's an AL file, and it's a layout. In this case, it's an RDLC layout, it could also be a word layout, or it could be both potentially. Um, so we need to get that. And the way I do it is that I'm using a Docker container for my development. And the, the incredible nav container helper uh, toolbox will also, when you create a Docker container, it will actually create the uh, a, a folder with all the objects. So I have a folder here. So if I do see if I have something called customer top, I do, I have two files. I have a customer top 10 list .al, and I have a customer top 10 list rdlc and this is the same mentioned here. So what I wanna do as the very first thing is that I'm going to copy those two. And by the way, I love the command line so, That's the way I roll. I copied them into my project, and as you can see, Visual Studio Code picks it up right away. Say, so, ah, you have some new files. Here you go. It already compiled and said there's a compile error. So what's the error? Well, there are actually two errors here. The first error is that I cannot have an object name name uh, numbered with 111 because that's outside my object range. Let's see what object range we have in this one. Let's say we're going to do 54, just to keep it interesting. So I need to renumber this one, 54, 100. But I still get an error on the object name because you cannot have two reports with the same name. So I will call this the YouTube version. There we go. Then a, in the in the in the renaming department, it's also proper to rename the RDLC file. So you you know in in case you're suddenly exporting a lot of objects, you would you don't want uh, two of two repo layouts to have the same name. That's gonna give you a lot of problem. So I'm just gonna say dot YouTube here also. And because I do that, then I have to rename the file. Here, dot YouTube. Let's try to compile this. Excellent. Uh, so now we have a complete copy. Let's actually in the caption say YouTube. And I will deploy it. F5 for deploy. And my server is called nav daily2. Here we go. Oh, that's from another video. Don't mind that one. We'll remove that in a second. So if I do customer top, 
I get two hits, I get my old original report and I get the new one. Well, and that's all good, but I don't want my users ever to use this one. And there might be programming somewhere that will automatically run a certain report. So I need, I want to substitute this one with this one. And the way to do that is let's go back into Visual Studio Code. We need to add a code unit. We will add a new file, subreports.al. That's a code unit. Give it a number, subreports. And I'll just tag this with YouTube so we know that this is one of these. There is a an, an event. So if we uh, would take the snippet for the event subscriber, it's a code unit. Oh wow, that was good. It, look at me type. Hi. It's a code unit called report management, and there is a event called on after substitute report, and that's the one we're going to use. So let me just clear this up for a second here. Skip, 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 all these. Uh, and let's see what parameters we actually get to this one. We will get, we'll get the report. And there is a var, uh, by reference, a new report ID. So that's the only thing you knew. So the only thing we have to do here is says if, report ID equals 111, then new report ID equal report colon colon customer top 10. So what did I do here? Instead of using the number, I just referenced it by the name, report colon colon and, and the name. So if I decide to rename my object, this code will still fly. Uh, you could say the same thing about the 111 that we could also go go full in and say say report customer top 10 list but microsoft is usually not uh renumbering reports so so it's, it's not a big concern uh, some prefer the the numbers some prefer the names uh, let's just leave it at the names so we need to do one more thing because now if we run this, we will still get two reports in the search function, and we don't want that. So let's go back to the actual report here and say that the users category is none, so it won't show up in uh, in the uh, in the search first uh, search. Tell me search function. That's what I wanted to say. Let's hit a five and try this out again. Compile, publish. There we go. And we still get the hello from another video. We will see past that. So now I'll do customer top. I only get one hit, so that's what I wanted. And as you can see, this is actually the new report. So even though we, we now got the old report in a search result. As soon as we ran it, it's actually the new one. So what we have done now is that we have substituted a built-in report with our custom one. And this works in, in all the combination where report is, is called, whether it's from the search or from an action or from code, that if you add a substitution, you can, you can switch in your own report. So let's recap what we did the first thing was that we grabbed the actual report files out of um, out of the nav container helper uh, folder copied into uh, into our project we renumbered and renamed it then we added in a code unit with a event subscriber in the report management code unit on after substitute report that replaced that report number with our own there you have it. That's how you uh, get started on customizing a uh, built-in report. Remember, follow me on Twitter, subscribe and like this video, and 
let me know in the comment or on Twitter if there's something else you want me to cover in, in one of these videos and I'll get right on it. Have a lovely day.